thought a nice border or framework would really help present this image just a little bit differently. So that's what we're going to take a look at producing now. So starting off, we're going to come to the Layers panel here. We need to unlock the background layer and we can do this by simply double clicking where it says background. That calls up the new layer dialog box. Layer zero is fine by me. Click in OK. You'll notice the padlock has disappeared as well. The reason for this is we want to put a new empty layer directly underneath the what was background layer is now layer zero. And we're going to do that by holding down the command key on a Mac. That's the control key on a PC. So holding down command or control, clicking on create new empty layer and it pops underneath this layer. Right, making sure we've got the default colours of black and white. Press D on the keyboard if you've got any other colours because we're going to fill this with the background colour which is white. Again, another great shortcut is simply use Command Delete. That's Command and Delete on a Mac. It is Control and Backspace on a PC. That's Control and Backspace on a PC. Right, coming to layer 0. We're going to put in a new empty layer. There it is. I'm going to press be on the keyboard or pick up the brush tool. Bring in the brush tool over the image. If you right click it brings up the brush menu there. We're going to scroll down and we're going to pick ourselves a brush something like that is pretty good but pretty small. So we're going to take the master diameter up. So there's good old master diameter going up in size. Clicking off. Let's just move this in as well. Now we need to press X on the keyboard. So pressing X on the keyboard to make sure we got white as the foreground color. We're going to click down. We're going to come across and give quite a sort of scruffy sort of edge to it. Something like that is pretty good. And down around again, giving a nice scruffy edge around this. Incidentally, it works extremely well. It doesn't matter if it's portrait, landscape style image. It works extremely well with this. Once you've created it, you can use it over and over again. So around we come. Job done. We're going to fill the center. You can just brush it all out or just pick pick up the fill tool. It's worth trying this as well. It's still got white as a foreground color so we can bring it in. But now you can see we can have a double edge to this. It mirrors the edge on the outside as well so it looks pretty good. We're going to come in now onto this layer here coming across onto the thumbnail and I'm simply going to press command or control. You can see the way the cursor changes and click down. We have made ourselves a selection. Right, if you come to the parts panel, if you haven't already got it open, you will go to window Dropping down to Paths, there it is, that will open it. Now on the Paths panel, come into this icon here, which I can only describe as a gear going with a chain going over the top of it. Click on it and our selection has now become a work path. We're going to go to Edit. We're going to drop down to Define Custom Shape. It's telling us it's Shape 12. You can see I'm highly imaginative with my naming, so Shape 12 it is. Clicking on this, dragging it down, we can delete it. We can even go to the panel we can delete this as well. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to come to our scene here and we're going to go to Layer. We're going to drop down to Vector Mask Hide All. So clicking on Vector Mask Hide All and it has done exactly what it said on the label. It has hidden it all. But you can see there it is there. It's still showing us in the Layers panel. Coming across, we're going to pick up the Shape Tools. We're going to drop down to the Custom Shape Tool, clicking on this. Making sure we've got the first icon press there. Coming across to the shape tools and making sure there's our number 12. We're going to click down. Now, this is what I mean, but you can do it landscape. You can do loads of little ones. You can do weird size ones. You can do whatever size you want. You can just drag it out over the, I'm going to go for the full size with this over the image. Now, as soon as you release it, hopefully through pops the image. There it is there. It's working on the mask. Right. Let's take a look. This is what we've got so far. Now, I want to give this a bit of a relief. It's flat there on the background, so we're going to click on the FX icon. We're going to go straight to Drop Shadow. Drop Shadow under the Layer Styles. We're going to take the size up like this. Now, this is bringing the Drop Shadow out from the back there. Let's take the spread out as well, just to sort of darken things down a little bit evenly all the way around. That looks pretty good like that. Now, the next thing is we're going to drop down. We're going to click on Stroke clicking on the color there. Let's pick up a color from the image, something like, uh, no, not as dark as that. Something like that looks pretty good. And we're going to click OK. This is outside. And you can see if you bring it out, you can see it is really on the outside. If you bring it to the inside, we're now going to drop this down 
and just bring it in a touch or two like that. What we got there, 16 is a good number. We're going to click OK to that. Right, job nearly done so far. So there it is. Uh, looking pretty good. You'll notice we get if you click on the mask there you can actually see the stroke path going around there so don't let that white area put you off. Let's just take a look. Looking at it itself, yeah that looks pretty good. Making sure we're working on this layer. Just clicking on this I'm going to use Command T or Control T which will bring up the transform tool. If we bring the cursor inside I'm going to choose warp because this will allow us just to pull the mask around a little bit. just want to make sure I get this guy creeping in on the edge there. This is actually a scene from the TV series Merlin and um, just going to drop it down a little bit. Looks like he's having a barbecue. Don't think they had barbecues in those days but there you go. Right, so pressing enter on the keyboard. That's applied it. Right, for the next stage Let's change this background. Looks a little bit bland as it is. So we're going to drop down. Clicking on this looks pretty good so far. We're going to come down again to the effects. Just on the screen now we have got pattern overlay. Coming to pattern overlay we have now bubble wrapped our background. Not quite what I had in mind. So we're going to come and to this little arrow here we're going to click on this. Dropping down to artist surfaces. I'm going to click on this. We're going to click append which will add it to our enormous list of two. I'm going to click on this one which is my favorite one and we're going to bring up the scale in like this that looks pretty good I want to give it that sort of stony parchmenty sort of look type thing so we're changing the scaling you drop the opacity color overlay could look pretty good but not in red clicking on this we're going to pick up a color from the image something like that will do a treat let's click OK at this stage you might want to try just dropping down the opacity so we get the texture coming through behind or what you can also do is just try changing the blend mode something like overlay like that that works well with it so you might even want to go for hard lights and drop the opacity down on that as well quite like that I'm sticking with that one now right that'll do doesn't matter though because don't forget these are all adjustment layers you can come back in and you can change any of this that you like exactly the same with this mask now at the moment it is still a vector mask come into the mask making sure we're working on this if you right click you've got disable vector mask delete vector mask or rasterize vector mask if we click on rasterize vector mask it now becomes a normal regular mask now this will give us the opportunity to come in and if you want to I've just got a weird size brush there let's just change it to a normal ish brush something like that you can come in now and you can sort of remove if you don't want any of these bits and pieces in there you can actually remove some of that framework like that so it gives you the opportunity to come in and to be able to adjust things I'm just going to get rid of a bit more of this like that you know you might even want to leave a little bit in around the corners or you do whatever you want to do it's just to show you that you can come in you can experiment with it right the way through like that there you are that is a bit different <laughs> right so now we've got to that stage that looks pretty good I think just to finish this off I'm going to come in now and I'm going to come to hue saturation it looks just a bit too colorful for me under the defaults I've got a preset for my sepia and just reducing the opacity down to bring through the just a touch of colors like that you know incidentally you'll find this as well on my website which is www dot darrow dash digital dot com pop along take a look this is actually an online video there if you're already on the site welcome and uh, as I say you'll find this how to set that preset up on the site as well but there it is there's our finished image completely adjustable in fact we can still come back into this clicking on this you can use control or command T for the transform tool I'm just going to pick up the warp tool again let's move this in and you can just sort of move this around a little bit and change the look of it it really is entirely up to you but it's just a great way of presenting your pictures just a little bit differently there it is there let's pop that onto a black background go on give it a try until the next time happy imaging and take care